Hi, I'm Erin from Cottage Designs by Erin on Etsy. And today I'm going to be showing you on this cold January day how to repurpose some linens that you find at thrift shops. So I'm going to show you a couple examples. This is a table runner that had magnificent handwork done on it. But if you notice, some of the stitches are missing here. It's very, very stained. Okay, this is what we started with. The two ends were the same. So what I did is I cut the good end off and I ended up with this. All right, so it's a beautiful time of year to start with gingham. Gingham sells like crazy in the spring. So I, um, let me get my camera straightened up here. I cut the good end off and I have just pinned it on a piece of gingham fabric. And so now we're gonna determine how large we want our pillow to be. You could use a pillow form, but it's not necessary. You can make your own. Okay, most pillows are 12, 14, 16, 18, or 20 inches. So we're gonna go with, um, I'm gonna cut it 16 and a half. because um, you need it to be a little bit, you always need it to be a half inch larger because your inseam is going to take up what you have going on. Okay, so we're going to cut that. Gingham is also nice to work with because you can use the grid lines on the gingham as a cutting line like you do on wrapping paper. Okay. So now we have our big piece here and we're going to have to cut some off the sides and off the top. The top is going to be even with the top of the linen. The top of my gingham was not cut evenly. That's why I moved it down a little bit. Moved the piece down on the gingham a little bit. Throw away any, anything that's too small to reuse. All right, now we have to, I just cut it, um, I think it was eight, 16, 16 and a half. And now, huh, let's see about cutting it. Let's see about having a half of an inch and a half on either side. So I'll use the closest mark for that. Okay. We'll take this side measure, inch and a half, which puts us on this line. All right, so we now we have our pillow basically um, all cut out. So I'm going to unpin the back. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take the back and I'm gonna lay it on top of the front. And if you do it correctly, your ginghams will match up. All right. Now we're going to pin that and sew it all the way around. This idea came to me years ago. I was at an antique store. I love to frequent antique stores. And there were all these beautiful handmade embroidered linens, but there was something wrong with every single one of them. They either had rust stains, blood stains, cigarette hole burns, you name it, 
And I thought, gosh, how sad that nobody's going to buy those because there's something wrong with them. What if we just cut the good parts off and made something out of that? And so that's how this came about. Okay, so I am going to now get to the bottom of the of the uh, pattern here, and I'm going to go about a half inch in. You want to give yourself plenty of fabric to turn under when you're done with the pillow. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and sew all the way around the pillow. And again, it's nice to sew on gingham because your straight lines are automatically there. Turn it and go sew towards me. On the outside edges, you could sew a quarter inch in, it'd be okay. But um, on the bottom, you need to leave a half inch for turning under so that you can sew it shut. When you get to the top of the pillow, you want to make sure that you have all your layers sandwiched in. The top, the pretty embroidered piece, and the back. Okay, so here we go with that. Okay, you're gonna back stitch, cut off any loose strings, take out your pins. Okay, before you flip the pillow inside out, you want to turn it over and make sure that you got everything caught in the seam allowance. Okay. Then you want to take your scissors and you want to cut an angle off the corners. You just make sure you don't cut through your seam allowance. All right. Now gently turn your pillow inside out.
still more trout. This is a fairly large pillow, but it was a large piece of embroidery to work with. So now then, go around and gently poke out the corners. And that is your first pillow. So then what you're going to do is you're going to decorate the pillow um, after you stuff it. So let me go ahead and stuff it and sew it shut and I'll be right back with you, okay? Okay, so I'm back and I've got the pillow completely stuffed now and so we're going to sew it shut. So if you notice, I've got the hem is turned under and it's pinned. And so when you sew the pillow, the game is, the trick of the game is to stitch it to where you cannot see your stitches, okay? So let me pin this again one more time. It's coming apart on me a little bit here. All right, so I have my needle threaded and you're going to poke the needle through both sides. and then make a very small stitch and come back through the back towards you. Maybe you call that the front, I don't know what you call it. But anyway, then you're going to catch the needle in the loop of the thread and pull. And I managed to pull that right out of there. But that's given us, we're going to double, double, uh, double thread it so it's stronger. try that again okay we're all threaded up again okay so when you stitch you're going to stitch just through the lining which is the the half inch um, that's folded under And you're going to go all the way across until you get the whole thing shut with itty bitty stitches. And you always want to make sure that you close the pillow at the bottom because that's the part that it'll be sitting on. That way then no one will see your work, see your stitches. You can take a great big running stitch, but um, just make sure it's going through just the lining and not both sides. Oh, it's a cease. <laughs> Excuse me. So sorry. Okay. And then we've got a little more to go here. When I sew pillows shut, I, I like to use a big needle. When I sew snaps on dog clothing, I use a teeny weeny tiny needle. It's whatever suits you. And then the best part about having this done is then you get to decorate the front of it when you're finished. I like to frou frou them up a little bit. That's what makes them sell. Because these are typically going to be accent pillows or bed pillows. Uh, one lady bought a bunch for me one year and she just put them all on her porch swing which I thought was a cute idea. Okay, so we've got that all sewn shut. Let me cut off anything extra. All right, so here is our finished pillow. And if you notice, I glued on, hot glued on a little rosette. And then I really like them um, over the top, so I usually put a big generous bow on there, but I typically pin it. So if the person who buys it is not a bow person, she can take it off. But you can't go wrong with big, beautiful satin. A big, beautiful satin bow. But you know, everybody's not into that. I kind of like, I like the shabby chic look. Okay, so we would then cut this off. Let me 
take scissors at. And just so you get the idea, I will go back and safety pin it, but just to give you the idea, I'm going to just use a regular straight pin on the back of this, a quilting pin. Okay, so then our pillow is finished, and it's quite beautiful. We have all this beautiful hand embroidery, gorgeous gingham, and a big luxurious bow. If you'd like to see more of my pillows, my handmade pillows, this is how I started my online shop, is making pillows. And um, I have a video, sorry, on YouTube. Strings all over me. I have a video on YouTube that shows you how I made some of my other pillows, but it's all basically the same idea, is I look for old linens that I can cut up and I can repurpose into new designs. So check that video out in my history of my videos on my channel. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you real soon. Bye.